Abdullah Safir, who is a um, Gates Cambridge scholar. Uh, he's doing a PhD on AI and how we can make it more ethical. Hello, welcome to the show. Thank you, and um, Eid Mubarak. Uh, Eid it was Mubarak. a very nice introduction. Thank you so much. How was your Eid? Oh, it was fantastic. I think, yeah, I'm, I got used to like very British kind of Eid. So yeah, yeah I enjoyed a lot actually, yeah. Thank oh, you. that's great. I'm glad you had fun. Yes. So tell me about uh, what you do in your PhD. Wow, uh, it's always a difficult question to uh, <laughs> reply. <laughs> um, but yes, um, as you say that um, I uh, actually work with AI ethics and human-centered design. So let me uh, explain a little bit because I know that it's a very uh, new thing. Maybe people would be interested to know. So um, what we mean by AI ethics is that like AI, which is a very amazing technology and it is like, you know, uh, opening a very newer like dimensions in how we live and how we imagine, how we do our work. But there are like some catches, like it could be designed in a way so that it, ha it could have some bias, it could have a privacy and fairness problem, it could have transparency problem. So these are all the ethical issues that um, this technology is dealing with. So we as an AI ethicist actually research how, how could we like you know design AI technology so that they don't um, do these bad things. So they are like more useful, they are more inclusive, they are more responsive to the people who will be using it. My research particularly is um, making AI technologies useful for Global South Populations Group. I work with uh, generative AI technologies, I work with the communities, I ask them how could we help you and then learning from them I actually like you know try to come up with the design recommendations so that it is in the next iterations these technologies could be more inclusive, more responsive to this, uh, this particular population group. That is so inspiring. It's so important to be able to create, like AI is such a new technology and I feel like we've sort of just gone into it and we haven't really, um, we haven't really thought about the effects that it might have on people such as artists yeah. um, with their art being used to make more generative AI um, and people seeing their artwork in, uh, recreated in AI exactly. and like not being able to have the credit for it, for example. Um, th th this, is, of course, is a very tricky situation, um, especially in Bangladesh, which has very weak like intellectual property rights and yes. very weak contract law and stuff like that. So, how exactly, uh, how exactly would you uh, enable um, people, artists' work to be protected in AI? in Bangladesh? Fantastic questions and very relevant. Um, you might be aware of that there are lots of conversations in very recent time in the, in the UK actually, like artists are raising their voices about mm. the privacy and copyrights. They are asking that we don't want AI to steal our artworks or so. But um, well, uh, in the Western world, um, they have some uh, laws and as you say, the laws and policies in place. But as you can imagine, in uh, developing countries like Bangladesh or like some other countries, they don't have like very like straightforward like copyright laws or intellectual property, especially marginalized artist group, they often are not aware that how to protect their artworks for the big techs companies who are like, you know, currently leading the AI work. So basically, um, one thing is that um, we don't have um, their voices reflecting into the discourse or the overall like AI related discussions. So my research, first of all, what, uh, what it does fundamentally is to bring the voices from the margin so, so that their concerns are also incorporated here. For example, they might be having um, very different idea about privacy. Maybe it's more collective than, than the individual centric things that we are work, work at thinking of in the UK or like in the Western world. So one thing is necessary to go to them and and understand their like you know concerns, their their um, aspirations or their um, challenges. Maybe they don't want AI to um, take their artworks. Maybe they don't want to uh, uh, like you know collaborate uh, without being um, being credited or they maybe want it to be um, contributing but they need fair pays 
uh, from these big tech companies. So what exactly their uh, their challenges are, what exactly their concerns are. So we need to go to them and like ask um, and bring those insights into into the modern and contemporary discussions of AI. So my research is fundamentally empowering the voices whose um, concerns are um, rarely been heard into this Western-centric paradigm of AI. That is so inspiring. I can imagine that it, it's, it must be so in, like, empowering to see um, a group whose voices have routinely been undermined by like like the big western ai corporations um and it's it's so lovely to see that there are people sticking out for them and people to sort of act as the middleman between the groups who need to be protected and like the ai corporations right um so how exactly did you get into this role how did you find yourself doing this research in the first place yeah, that's a very good question. So I uh, was actually trained in engineering back in my undergraduate. Ah. Yes, so I studied engineering in Bangladesh uh, from Buet, which is like Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology. Mm. So that's an interesting thing. When I was studying that, I was not properly, I'd say that I was not very um, content with what I was studying at because most of the cases, our technical solutions are designed for the groups uh, who are oftentimes more privileged. So there are like some marginalized populations group whom we don't think about. So how mm. could we design technologies so that they are like more useful to these groups? So that's the uh, thinking that actually influenced my later works. So after my undergraduate, I, I actually um, was more interested in to human computer interaction research, which is basically um, and interdisciplinary studies where we understand computer science and also draw from social sciences and critical um, other critical theories and hum humanities. So it's, it's very exciting because you actually blend up so many things to make technology work better. So uh, in my master's when I came here in the UK uh, to do my, um, my, uh, do my master's uh, with Commonwealth scholarship uh, that year, um, I actually delved deeper into the more social political aspects of AI. Ah. Uh, it was in University of Warwick. Later, um, actually it builds on the previous work, you, you always know, right? Mm. So after my master's, I, was, um, uh, I started working as a research assistant at the University of Cambridge. So it's the center which is called Center for Future of Intelligence, which is, um, which is kind of Cambridge's premier AI uh, research center. Um, so after that, I started my MPhil uh, in the same center um, that was in AI ethics, which is the, actually the first, first of its type degree, maybe in the world. Yeah, it must <laughs> so be. after that, um, yes. Yeah, so now I'm doing my PhD. I started last year, so I'm still in a nascent stage of my PhD. <laughs> uh, but yes, um, I came here. It's difficult, I must admit. I was very uh, lucky, I'm humbled that I was um, uh, supported by many um, scholarships. Uh, one of them is the Gates Cambridge scholarships that I can talk about uh, because uh, it's, it's very difficult and competitive, uh, of course. Um, and there are a few people, uh, very few Bangladeshi representations in this, um, this like oh, scholarship mm. so i would be i would be happy to see more faces because everywhere i go uh it's it's doesn't feel like you are the only person in the cohort yeah. and i know because i work with the representation and i work with excess and equity in ai so it is very much related to me that i want to um, ensure more diverse voices and more um, plural, plural, ethical point of views in mm. the discussions, both in scholarly and both in leaderships and practices, so so that um, we can make our world better. Yeah, AI is such a new technology, and it's going to be so transformative. But is that transformation even useful if it doesn't represent all corners of society? If it doesn't ensure that all people are treated fairly? Um, and yet, yeah, it's so important to have more people from our community, more Bangladeshi people, but also more people in marginalized communities in general be in these spaces so that any like research or any sort of like, yeah, research and policies that can come about um, in this sort of space can 
be representative of different backgrounds. Um, yes, you yeah. were absolutely right, Tasnim, and I'm, I'm glad that you brought up this uh, issue because, like, um, as I said, that I use uh, one of the terminology in my work is majority world, because mm. sometimes we we um, we cannot imagine that there is a world um, be beyond the north, beyond the global north, but we are the majority people, and um, nothing about us should not be without us. So, like, um, yes, so we need to bring those, like, more perspectives into the design conversation so that these technologies are more useful, as, as you said, yes. Yeah, so do you want to talk more about your Gates scholarship and how did you... How yeah. did you access it and how did you find it? Well, well, that's that's a good point, I would say, because um, it's a competitive process that I mentioned. So, um, so it's, 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 it's the, the scholarship is funded by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, as you were aware of. Mm -hmm. So they actually invest in like, I think, um, uh, less than 100 students every year uh, for both MPhil and PhDs. So, um, uh, um, a kind of like a big portion of the scholars are coming from the US. So for the rest of the world, they have like um, few seats open and the competition is fierce. So when you apply to a department, specific department for your master's or your PhDs, so they do the initial screening. So you have to be like, you know, first nominated by your department. So you can imagine there are lots of departments in Cambridge. Yeah. So they go to like the second layer of, uh, what would I say, uh, second layer of like, you know, assessment. And, they, and then after that, they actually invite you for interview. And this interview is very hard. You can see that many like, you know, accomplished academics and professors asking you uh, not so difficult questions, but to like, you know, understand what would you like you know bring into the table it's not about scholars or scholarly work it's about leadership it's about how how can it, how can your work is going to um, make changes in the society and and in the world on a larger scale so they assess that but it's not about that you have to or less work with AI. You can do whatever you, you want. Maybe you could do physics, maybe you could mm. do mathematics, but there, there needs to be some social aspect of it, like um, bringing to the social justice or change making. Uh, and then they realize that, yes, these are the people we're looking for, and then they take you in. So it's a very long process. You yeah. apply in October, and maybe you get the final results in next year, April or so. A long time uh, waiting. Yeah, of course, I, I, you can imagine. Yeah, but that's that's such a special opportunity, and like to to have your entire um, work at Cambridge be funded. Like it must be, it's such a prestigious scholarship. It must be. You must be so proud of yourself. <laughs> Yes, I'm humbled and also proud, but I, as I say that I will be very happy if I see more people in yeah. the coming cohorts because I think so. I am the sixth Bangladeshi in its, in its 25 years. Oh, wow. So, uh, yeah, there are lots of Indians, lots of Pakistanis and other, other from other Bengalis. countries representations, but it would be great to have more Bangladeshis, of course. So on that note, um, do you have any pieces of advice that you'd give to um, young people like me? Mm -hmm. You are very smart. You don't need advice from me. <laughs> but um, what I can say is that um, yes, um, keep your um, like you know keep your like dreams high uh, and work hard because yes, it 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 comes either way if you are like you know consistent with whatever you want to do. And yeah, don't get into like, you know, if people say you can't do it, uh, don't, don't listen to this. Just, just follow your heart and work hard. Thank you. What an inspiring message. I'm sure everyone out there listening will really take on those words and hopefully apply for the Gates Scholarship and hopefully be the seventh Bangladeshi person <laughs> on the scholarship program. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. A truly inspiring. Like, I, I think it's so important to have th this AI transformation, like it's happened so fast. It's happened like, with a click of a finger. Um, 
And we need to be able to have that social aspect as you were talking about. We need to be able to ensure that it remains equitable and that all people are represented and that um, it happens with, with the people that it, it's meant to support at the, at the heart. Right, amazing. Yeah. You're, you're right, yes. So, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs>